It was 1987 when the World Cup was played in India and Pakistan jointly. And the quarterfinals match between West Indies and Pakistan. West Indies batted first. Pakistan was into the play. They were into the last wicket. Abdul Qadir and Wasim Jafar were at the crease. And the great West Indian pace baller, the first pace baller in the world to have 500 test wickets in his kitty, Cutney Walsh was bowling. And Walsh, at the end of his run-up, towards the crease, was just about to put the ball. And Wasim Jafar left the crease for a quick single, whether the ball cracks the bat of the batsman or not. Abdul Qadir was at the striking end. Wasim Jafar at the non-striking end. Cutney Walsh did not bowl. He asked Wasim Jafar to get back into the crease. See, he had a choice. He could have run out him, which is popularly known in cricket as Mankad. He could have done that, but he did not. He asked Wasim Jafar to get back into the crease and went back to his run-up. He bowled. On this side, West Indies needed one wicket to win the quarterfinals and enter into the semi-finals. On the other side, West and Pakistan needed just two runs to enter the semi-finals. They scored it. For the first time in the history of World Cup, West Indies was out of the World Cup in the preliminary rounds. When he was walking back to the pavilion, 70,000 crowd at the Gaddafi Stadium rose on their feet to applaud the value to applaud the spirit of the game that Cutney Walsh had shown. 1975, the West Indies were the champions. 1979, they were the champions. 1983, they were the final. They, came, they entered the finals. They lost against India. For the first time, they were out before the semi-final encounter. When Cutney Walsh bowled his last delivery in an international match, at his hometown in Trinidad and Tobago. Australia Channel 9 prime commentator Richie Beno said at the end of the day when the team was coming back, seeing Courtney Walsh leading the team back, bowling his last international delivery, Richie Beno said, here comes the last of the gentlemen cricketers. And thereafter, the age of match-fixing and sport-fixing started. <laughs> Values were replaced by valuables. The age of match-fixing and sport-fixing. Years later, when Courtney Walsh was interviewed by BBC Cricket, he was asked that why did you prefer to make the other choice? You knew that you could have Officially, legally, taken your team into the semi finals. Courtney Walsh said something which is a source of inspiration for all of us today. So high regards for values, Courtney Walsh said, I was not raised to do that. The way in which I was raised by my parents, I was taught cricket by my coach. I cannot do that. I cannot run out a person in such a way before once giving him a warning. Again, BBC asked him because they wanted something spicy from his mouth. As normally these people want. Again, he was asked that did, were you aware that your this action could lead West Indies from the exit? He said, I knew it. Then why didn't you do it? Again, he said, the spirit of the game was so high valued in my heart that today when you are asking me this question, for the first time, I'm getting a thought in my mind that I had a second choice. At that time, I thought I had only one choice and that to give the warning to the non-strikers batsman. He becomes a source of inspiration. He's a valued person. And today, maybe like more than 30 years hence, 35 years hence, in the opening session 
of the silver jubilee of AMA campus, we have very fondly remembered Courtney Walsh. I want to share another incident with you. You might all have heard the name of Maradona, the great footballer. All have heard the name of Michel Platini, the great French footballer. In 1986, Maradona led Argentina to a World Cup victory. In 1990, the world football, that is FIFA, they decided to have a charity match, the proceeds of which will go forward to help those footballers who had not earned enough or those footballers children for better education so a charity match was decided one team was led by maradona the other team was led by michel platini along with that they had thought of this as well to induce some more values in the lives of footballers especially against corruption and against drugs so maradona and his team had they had worn a t-shirt say no to drugs Michel Platini and his team had worn the t-shirt, say no to corruption. In between them as the match referee was the great Pele of Brazil. The match was played in a packed stadium. They must have collected hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well distributed for the purposes for which the charity match was played. A few years later, Maradona was caught possessing drugs, intake of drugs, and he was suspended from football for six months. He could not stand the value for which he once stood just because of attraction towards valuables. In 2015, Michel Platini was banned for life from holding any post in football in any club. You don't have to step on the football ground on the charges that the ethics committee of fifa had put on him and proved the charges of corruption of said perhaps more than five million euros so even michel platini could not stand by the values that he once stood for for say no for corruption both of them failed and today they are not an inspiration for the youth. Today, we don't remember them with that regards that we remember Courtney Walsh. What I mean to say is, to think of values, to live by values, and to sustain those values in your hearts and minds, lifetime, which ultimately becomes your character, is definitely a challenge. But when we hear of such happenings in the society, we are definitely inclined towards living a value-based life because values that don't hold the power to hold your life together when you fail on values. Valuables don't hold the power to hold your life together when you fail on values. Do you agree with me? And on the other side, values, they hold the power to bring your life back on track when you have lost valuables. This is the big difference between values and valuables. Values have the power to make you immortal. As Courtney Walsh is an immortal personality, not in the, just in the game. But at the same time, through ages, till the sun and the moon shines upon this earth, Courtney Walsh would be remembered. Many such incidents in lives of many public figures. But this is a clear aspect of life that values can make your life valuable, break your life. I sometimes jokingly say, in a lighter moment that even if you are the king of the skies you have to leave india without an indian passport if you lose on values 
Even if you have become the Sahara of thousands of families and given them homes, you can still lie be Sahara in Tihar for four years. If you lose on values. If you play to deshape, overshine or undershine a cricket ball, you definitely incur a life ban on yourself. You know the names, so I'm not calling out the names. Those people who tried to deshape, overshine or undershine the cricket ball, they had to leave cricket. Yes or no? Those who played with the banks, they had to leave the country. A few are in London, a couple of them in the Caribbean, they will all be brought back. Values are the most important assets of your life. Values have the power to create valuables. Valuables don't stand the power to create values. So Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People writes that imagine you are dead, your near and dear ones, friends are around you. And if God graces you the power to listen while you are dead, what would you like to listen about yourself from your near and dear ones or the people who work with you, people who associated with you? To hear that after your death, your whole life of 60, 70, 80 years, you have to live on values. Money can buy you a good bed, but it does not have the capacity to give you a good sleep. Isn't it? Money can buy you a good house. It does not have the capacity to turn that house into a home. Money can buy you the best of jewelry and branded cloths. It does not have the power to give you handsomeness and beauty. Money can buy you a good healthcare plan. It does not have the power to give you health. So if there are 100 things that money can buy, there are 1000 things that money cannot buy, still you need it to become happy. This is the power of values. See, paneer, curd, butter, buttermilk, all are made up of milk. Still their prices in the market are different. They are basically milk products, but their prices are different. In the same way, we have all been given human life by God. Our prices means two things, a total life satisfaction at the end of your life and your image, your place in the hearts and minds of people. It depends upon what value you attach to your life. We all got human, human life. What values you attach with it are more important. And basically, they are the foundation of a great life. But you know, in the 20th century and the 21st century man's life, we are less on understanding, really less on understanding that values are more important than valuables. Still, we run after valuables at the cost of values. We are less on understanding on this. I just exemplified. Wheat vadas and samosas fried in spoiled oil. Wheat pani puris, the puri filled with pani, that is water, unhygienic. We may eat like vegetables and fruits laden with fertilizers. We drink black liquid, the cold drinks. Two big brand names. We chew and smoke tobacco as if there is no tomorrow. With all this doing, if for some reason, someday we go to a doctor for some illness and doctor prescribes, we with all seriousness in our heart and mind just tell the doctor, doctor, I think you are confident in prescribing this. This medicines don't have a side effect, isn't it? You tell the doctor that, doctor, please, I think the medicines don't have the side effect. Then what about you eating samosas and vadas <laughs> in unhygienic spoiled oil and eating pani puris on roadside with unhygienic water filled in it and without chewing and eating tobacco as if there is no tomorrow. At that time, you don't think of the side effects of it.
every day 82 people die in india because of tobacco related cancer every day so we are less on understanding that values are more important than valuables we go after valuables at the cost of values as i exemplified that that we go after taste at the cost of our health this is a clear exemplification of it we go for taste at the cost of our health that means our mind is definitely inclined towards going towards valuables at the cost of values as simple as that you have to attach your values to valuables only your valuables then will shine see i'm not against valuables your possession of a fine bungalow or an apartment is a human dignity human endeavor human duty your possession of a fine car your possession of branded clothes i'm not against it i'm not against you wearing any branded items fine if you enjoy it if you want it if you can afford it definitely you can well i am wearing the most old branded clothes ever upon this planet <laughs> i'm not against it but don't compromise on values any valuable has to be attached by a value to make it shine see talent and looks are god given isn't it you have to be thankful that thankfulness is prayers at least remembering him in a day in once in a day in the morning out of lakhs of people upon this earth some are extraordinary talented out of lakhs of people upon this earth some has good looks well standing in front of the mirror everybody feels that just a 5% betterment on my face i would have worked in one of the woods bollywood hollywood tollywood collywood follywood any of the woods that everybody feels when he or she stands in front of the mirror but talent and looks are absolutely god given they are valuables but you have to attach a value to it and that is be thankful be humble if you go for egoistic behavior because of your talent and looks you will spoil that valuable one day because you did not attach a value called being thankful to that valuable fame and money are valuables given to you by society talent and looks by god fame and money by society by people there also you have to attach a value to it and that value is being grateful that value is being so grateful that you give back to the society if after having fame and money you don't care for the society you don't care for the less privileged people you don't give back to the society in some other way that the resources that you possess you are not being grateful to the society so fame and money are good valuables but you have to attach a value called being grateful to it to make it shine otherwise they will go dull attitude and ego are self designed valuables attitude and ego are self designed valuables i don't know exactly they are valuables or not but we prefer to call it valuables because we wear them 24 7 365 80 did you get what I, did you get what i said 25 by 7 is 24 hours a day 7 days a week 365 days of the year and 80 is 80 years of your life 24 7 365 80 we wear ego and attitude as attire in our facial expressions in our body language in our in our words we feel that it is a valuable i have earned it it is not a valuable still we prefer to call it a valuable even then you have to attach a value to it and that value is be careful if you are not careful about your attitude and ego times will come days are not far that you will be minimized to your original stature by people society and happenings 
so talent and looks are god given be thankful fame and money are society given be grateful attitude and ego are self given be careful what does this mean this means that possession of any valuable you will have to attach a value to it otherwise that valuable may not be with you it will fall down it will it will lose its shine a value has to be attached to every valuable as i talked about the money story values are always most important values should be in life so that your valuables shine with all the valuables in your life if you are less on values you may lose all of it someday and with all the good values in your life and absolute zero on valuables still you can live forever in the hearts and minds of people let me give you a case study let us have a case study of a comparison between elvis presley and mirabai in the common terminology both were singers elvis presley and mirabai in the common terminology both were singers for elvis presley his biographer has written that he is only the second person in history to become famous by the first name that is elvis after jesus christ jesus no biography has ever been written about mirabai elvis presley when he was just 21 years age there were 78 presley products in the market mirabai did not endorse any product we are having a case study elvis presley has sell fund more than about 500 million dollars mirabai had to wait for some donor for a meal at least one meal a day at the bakke bihari temple elvis presley had a very good audience a town hall of this type or a stadium every day in the evening when mirabai sang at the bakke bihari temple there was no audience more than 500 million records of elvis presley have been sold we don't have a single record of mirabai when elvis presley used to travel for by road there was a cavalcade of seven limousine cars when the president of america did not have a limousine car elvis presley had seven each one of them studded with diamonds on the paint so from a distance the shining cars the cavalcade would come mirabai if she had to go from one place to another she had to walk she did not have a car elvis presley when he would fly there were two boeings one would carry him and his entourage with an inbuilt bath facility and bedroom and everything and the second jet would take his stage and pa system and everything mirabai had nothing of this sort so now perhaps you would tell me swami ji why did you start this case study isn't it case study a comparison should be between two people of equal status yes or no two people of equal status and why did you you would all say waste our time in a comparison in a case study between elvis presley and mirabai now let me give you a better picture of it once elvis presley was trying to compose his most famous composition how great dawat and his secretary she just entered the room and she said sir how are you feeling you are at the peak of your fame because when elvis presley doing his famous swivel on the stage putting his two hands on the ground and then he would swivel and after that he would he would open up his leather jacket and throw in the audience within minutes that leather jacket would be torn into small pieces and people would take as a memory as a souvenir 
and today in many houses in america on the in the sitting room in the showcase you would see a small piece of jacket and people would proudly say that once i attended elvis live the secretary said that sir you are at the peak of your fame how are you feeling elvis presley dropped his two hands apart from the piano and said i'm feeling alone and really he was feeling alone in the midst of so many people such a good gathering and audience every day that at the age of 33 on 16th august 1977 elvis presley took 40 sleeping pills committed suicide he never woke up the next morning at the age of 36 with so much of valuables with him fame money talent a study says that 10 michael jackson cannot make one elvis presley the greatest entertainer the planet has ever seen he gave up his life and that to at the age of 36 mirabai did not commit suicide on the other hand you would be surprised to know and you would be happy to know as well that today in india there are more than 300 people who have done some research some work written some papers on the bhajans of mirabai they have got their mphil degrees and phd degrees and they with their families are living a good life so mirabai today after 500 years she has given life to 300 families elvis presley took his life mirabai's bhajan gave life to 300 families because she had the biggest value payo ji maine ram ratan dhan payo from where all the values descend from where you get all the inspiration to imbibe in values in your life she had that so elvis committed suicide and today on each and every bhajan of mirabai people live a good life on bread and butter for their family so this is a perfect case study of values versus valuables in other words mirabai versus elvis presley same in the present stories in the last 5 7 days you might be reading in the newspapers vinod kamli searching a job this is again sachin versus vinod kamli if you want to name this topic both started together 624 runs is their partnership world record between the two they played for 3 long days together in his first test series in 1993 vinod kamble scored more than 700 runs in 10 or 11 tests with two double centuries coach acharyakar ji would always tell all his students that both of my students that is sachin tendulkar and vinod kamble would play for india but i vouch for what for vinod kamli that he would play first and then sachin will follow him. when vinod kamli used to bat coach achrekar used to tell sachin tendulkar and another player anil gurav that stop us had all the activities just watch him playing he is coaching in action the selection of shots the footwork but somehow we missed somewhere in life late night parties sometimes over drinking some bad company and today we can see the difference between sachin tendulkar the god of cricket adam gilchrist was once asked sir have you seen god by an interviewer he said yes and everybody was surprised he said i know very well that i have seen god he plays at number 4 in india when the great pakistan pacer wakar yunus he retired 
he was asked the best batsman that he has ever bowled he said undoubtedly sachin tendulkar he was asked why he said that against my flipper and reverse swing around his legs he could play a glance even with a walking stick forget a bat if you give a walking stick in his hand sachin he can play a leg glance to my reverse swings this all accolades could have been earned by vinod kamli as well he had all the opportunities because he had all the talents again this topic after elvis presley versus mirabai sachin versus vinod kamli and i am not talking of the big name that mukesh bhai mentioned in his introduction at the start of it one brother at the height of the finance world and the other brother gone away so values have the power to create valuables valuables don't have the power to create values and values once possess over attachment to it it has the power to distort your life at that time if you are strong on values you can reset your life values have the power to reset your life is the most important aspect another aspect of values versus valuables is that too much of run for valuables has sometimes in a reflection of our own self very clearly told us that we are less on being humans too much of valuable possession in your life make us less humans gives just a single direction run this is a 70 or 80 year game not more i think we all know it isn't it this is a 70 or 80 year game google owner larry page he at the moment is going for biomedical biomedics research he has a dream of lengthening the human life of 100 220 250 as well but at least this generation will not see it so let's keep it to 70 or 80 years too much run after valuables we lose on values in life so have a designed run so have a controlled run because the amount of money that you have in your bank account when you die is the extra work you did you shouldn't have done or if at all you did you should have used that money for a better cause or as mukesh bhai said kafan ko jeb nahi hoti ye aap samajh lo to values pe aa jaunga you will come on values values pe aap aa jaoge kafan ko kabhi jeb nahi hoti and 1.5 lakh people leave this earth every day that is every day 1.5 lakh people means 24 hours 86200 seconds every 2 seconds three people leave this earth we started this talk it is almost like half an hour 30 minutes that is 1800 seconds 2400 people left this earth and if for some reason god decides to put tomorrow's full concentration on ama membership It is his choice always. We are a speck of dust in this entire existence. We are a speck of dust. You know at least that much. Cholo, that is a bigger philosophical statement that I used. But at least we all know that in the map of Ahmedabad, our house doesn't have a place of even a dot. Yes or no? ચોખ્ખી દેશી ભાષામાં આટલી તો ખબર છે ને કે અમદાવાદ નો નકશો બને એમાં આપણા ઘર માટે ટપકું મૂકવાની જગ્યા જોરથી બોલો તો વી આર નોટ ઇવન અ સ્પેક ઓફ ડસ્ટ ઇન ધીસ એન્ટાયર એક્ઝિસ્ટન્સ વાય એટીટ્યુડ એન્ડ ઇગોઝ ફોર વોટ રીઝન જસ્ટ ઇટ ઇઝ ફોર વન રીઝન ઓવર પોઝેશન ઓફ વેલ્યુઝ મેક યુ ઇગોઇસ્ટિક એન્ડ ઇન ટુ એન્ડ ઇગોઇસ્ટિક એટીટ્યુડ 
when i talk to corporates i tell them that if you really introspect every third person sitting besides you is in some way more intelligent more talented more experienced than you do we all believe this just raise your hands if you say yes in some way it is there when you have raised this hand you have given up your attitude and ego from today right gone in the air over possession over infatuation over run for valuables you lose on values there is a famous story the vulture and the little girl world famous photographer kevin carter was in sudan to picture to click some famine related shots and the famous shot that you all might have seen is a small little sudanese girl unable to walk because she had not eaten since 5 7 days she was crawling but could not move she was thirsty because she had not drank water for one or two days and behind her a vulture was slowly approaching her a vulture was slowly approaching the little girl waiting for the little girl to die so vulture could have his food kevin carter saw this and he clicked this picture which became world famous and because of which sudan started having inputs of huge un aids after taking the picture he straight away headed for the airport and went back to his country and because of this picture he was well lauded all over the world major tv channels celebrating him in one of the programs on the stage the program included a small phone in program schedule so one of the callers at that time called to ask a question to kevin carter that sir after you took the picture what happened to that little girl and kevin carter said sorry i don't know what happened to her i was in a rush so after taking the shot i rushed to the airport because it was my flight time the person at the other end said sir i will put it this way that at that time there were two vultures there one had the big the other had the camera you should have helped the little girl after taking that shot she was struggling to reach the united nations feeding center from where she could get water and food you should have picked up that little girl and taken her there imagine that means if at all at that very moment if the vulture had pounced upon that little weak girl dying out of starvation i think you would have clicked another picture and got more acclamation for that that words of that phone in program person who called him took so much possession over kevin carter that he slipped into depression and ultimately committed suicide kevin carter the world famous photographer would have been alive today had he taken that small little girl starving for food to the un center which was just a few meters away overrun for valuables that means fame and money has made us less humans we are less on valuable you may try to possess the valuables that you want but at the same time you should not be less on values otherwise you cease to be a human being as simple as that you cease to be a human being a photographer once had a board on his studio that to click a photograph as you look 20 rupees <laughs> to get a photograph clicked as you think you should look 30 rupees to click a photograph as you think people should be thinking of you 50 rupees how should you look in the eyes of people after many years he writes in his memory that 90% of the people who came to my studio wanted the rupees 50 photograph so this is our common mentality when we go to purchase even a t-shirt or a shirt or a pant and after we choose it and in the time of choosing process the first thought faithfully and keep your hand on your heart and tell me the first thought is 
how would i look in this isn't it tell me a faithful yes or no my question to you all is did you select that because you liked it or did you select that so but so that somebody else likes you wearing that first one is a value second one is a valuable so are you living a real life or a real life introspect we you are selecting your clothes and shoes because you like it how would i look in the eyes of people wearing this when you think of that you have not understood this topic that values are more important than valuables because if at all you think that how would i look like my that friend my that relative my that neighbor would like because he appreciates this color she likes this style whatever but if out of your 10 associates seven would appreciate at least two would feel <laughs> and your mood goes down and if you want to check it for yourself at the other end in a party or a gathering if somebody is constantly aware of what he or she has worn and the garments and the jewelry and everything if somebody is an experiment don't try it but it is theoretically right <laughs> you can go up to him or her and just tell in, in their ears jamta nahi hai combination theek nahi hai the color combination isn't good your style jara theek nahi hai itna bolna and then after 5 10 minutes from a distant away you just look at the facial expressions and the body language all the energy would get drained of that person we are such cheap and mean minds because we bank for our personality on valuables we don't bank for our personality on values gandhi ji used to wear just an upper cloth and half dhoti but winston churchill the war time prime minister said i don't want to meet him i don't want to have a conversation with him and he used to tell the ics officers when you go to india you will be governors of huge huge provinces at the age of 25 and 26 smart ics officers you have the power to do everything in india don't do one thing don't talk to gandhi and sardar and this smart dynamic young ics officers would question winston churchill the man who gave us v for victory symbol during the world war 2 when adolf hitler was bombarding in london and he bombarded through 300 war planes and the it was carpet bombing whole of london was burning at that time he gave this symbol we for victory he was afraid of talking with gandhi he used to give this advice to ics officers don't talk to gandhi and this ics officers would tell why for what reason and winston churchill the war time prime minister of england would say that that these two people are so high on values so high on integrity so high on faithfulness to their ideologies and nation so much committed to the people of their country and they live a so simple life these are all great values that now listen carefully that in a 10 minute conversation across the table with sardar or gandhi after that they will throw a blank paper on your face command you to sign it and you would be so much mesmerized by their presence by their aura that even being an ics officer you would sign a blank paper and they will write the text after that <laughs> they have the power to officially take your resignation and send you back to england power of values when our guruji pramukh sami maharaj met bill clinton in miami in florida in the year 2000 pramukh sami maharaj's age was 80 years a saffron clad person from india 80 years of age not being able to speak a single sentence in english imagine the 22 minute meeting between the two <laughs> and bill clinton one of the most charismatic presidents of us 6 feet 3 inch height he was the governor of arkansas for about two or three terms and the midst of depression he had by his policies by his economic policies he had held the dollar and if you want to put his charisma it is in the line of george washington abraham lincoln john f kennedy such charismatic presence and the president of america is like the king of the world because the top 500 institutions of the world from imf to united nations to unicef to world health organization they run on american money 
Dollar is that powerful and defense power, R&D power of America is unbelievable. They are the largest and the strongest economy of the world. When Bill Clinton after the 22 minute meeting actually must have been just eight or nine minutes of conversation because Bill Clinton would talk in English. One of our saints would that be an interpreter to tell Pramukh Swami Maharaj in Gujarati. Pramukh Swami Maharaj would answer in Gujarati or ask something in Gujarati. Interpreter would tell that in English. So in the 22 minute meeting, it would just have been a seven or eight minute conversation. In that, Bill Clinton was so much impressed. He said, now I'm quoting him, not just word to word, but letter to letter. Bill Clinton said, I have not seen such expressive eyes full of integrity in my life. In any terms, on any day, under any circumstances, can any valuable impress the president of America? But values have the power to impress the president of America in this attire. By an eight-year-old person. Not speaking a single word in English. And Pramukh Swami Maharaj, towards the end of the conversation, just held Bill Clinton's hand. And in traditional Gujarati, he said, I'm, I'm just uh, quoting him letter to letter in his uh, uh, pious words. Pramukh Swami Maharaj said, Sahib Amaru Akshardam Gandhinagar Juwa Khas Aujo. <laughs> and the interpreter said that he's inviting you to Swaminan Akshardam at Gandhinagar. Bill Clinton said, when he is inviting, I will come. And he came. <laughs> this is the power of values. As Winston Churchill was impressed by Gandhi and Sardar, Bill Clinton was impressed by Pramukh Sai Maharaj. To impress the President of America in the first meeting is not a joke. Eh? As I said, he is the king of the world. He will dream something tomorrow morning at 5. His time. At 10, he can. And if America goes with its full power in war with any country of the world, within 72 hours, it can bring that country to its knees. It has that power. That president getting impressed. Same happened with Tony Blair, the then Prime Minister of England, when they met Pramukh Swami Maharaj. Same happened with uh, John Major, ex-Prime Minister of England, when he was the Prime Minister and met Pramukh Swami Maharaj. And in 2015, our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, he tweeted on the 95th birthday of Pramukh Swami Maharaj. Simple words, but very expressive. He said that I have learned some of the most valuable wisdoms of my life through my meaningful conversations with Pramukh Swami Maharaj. So when you have values in life, you don't need valuables. You don't need valuables. People will create valuables in your name. Statue of unity. When you have values in your life, and Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel passed away, he was the Deputy Prime Minister and the Union Home Minister of India. And he had just 735 rupees in his bank account. Because he had just 735 rupees in his bank account as the Deputy Prime Minister of the Union of Minister of India. This 2200 crore Statue of Unity. <laughs> had there been a few more zeros behind that 735, as normally happens today. Had there been a few more zeros behind that 735, this statue wouldn't have come up. Sorry. That means values have the power to create valuables in your name. Unlimited possession of valuables don't have the power to create value of yours. That is your place in the hearts and minds of people. This is the power of values. As I described, integrity, commitment, helping people, positivity, faith. These are all values in life. Even if you introspect, if I give you a choice, keep all the valuables that you have. I give you 10 times of it. But I'll take away your near and dear ones, family members or friends or your hobbies. Even then you will be, a, it will be difficult for you to survive. The upper stage of that is values. The most needed things in life. 
so give more importance to values than valuables and if you have that basic way of living it is a very simple living with high thinking once pramukh sami maharaj had to change the uh, glasses of his specs because the numbers had changed so the person who had gone out to fetch the new ones he changed the frame as well when he gave this specs to pramukh sami maharaj pramukh sami maharaj as his routine offered it to hari krishna maharaj and then started and just started to have the use of it he saw that the frame has changed he asked why did you change the frame and the person said swami ji this frame is like 8 10 years old and as such we had to change the glasses we changed the frame as well out of his love and devotion towards his guru pramukh sami maharaj said very simple question see the person who is high on values and knows the distinguished power of values and the difference between values and valuables pramukh sami maharaj a simple question have i to see through the glasses or the frame very simple question but only a person on high on values can ask this question and we we can ask a very simple question to the same person anathi sari marti thi ale atli to sari layi aayo pramukh sami maharaj asked have i to see through the glasses or the frame and the person said of course sami through the glasses sami ji said the frame was okay if the shopkeeper is ready to buy to get it that is if you can give it back to the shopkeeper please give it get the money back get the original frame and that is what happened what i mean to say is is a very good question if you don't remember anything else in this talk remember this one sentence have i to see through the glasses or the frame ask this question at many stages in your life ask this question to yourself a couple of times in a day see because a luxurious and a spacious office is your valuable but your punctuality is a value only then that valuable will stand your luxurious central air condition house is a valuable but you faithful to your family relationships is your value only then that house will stand am i right or wrong your all the degrees on your visiting card is a good valuable but your commitment to those degrees is your value only then that visiting card will stand so valuables are absolutely dependent upon values for their existence this is the most upper limit of things that i have said valuables are absolutely dependent on values for their existence values are independent so make a wise choice that you stand a good chance for a great change in your life god will not ask you the number of friends that you had on fb when you go there god will ask did you have a couple of friends that you can say that we are one soul in two bodies it's a value of friendship isn't it god will not ask that did you have the best of neighbors that you liked in your society god will ask did you become a good neighbor to somebody in your society isn't it so what i mean to say it is the values that create you values that define you and ultimately values that give you a final good position of self satisfaction and a place in the hearts and minds of people it is as simple as that the biggest of all values the mother of all values is faith in god from faith generates all the values shraddha once our guru shastri ji maharaj who created this bfps swami nand sanstha was confronted by an atheist he said that god doesn't exist our guru ji said god 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 does exist he said see it makes me no difference i am enjoying i am playing drinking being happy merry it's a good life for me 
Arjun Shastri Ji Maharaj said, good life for me as well. I'm performing my religious rituals, my arti, going to the mandir, darshan, scriptures. And he said, fine. Then what is the use? Like not enjoying your life in the worldly manners. Arguru Shastra Ji Maharaj said a wonderful point. That today when you don't believe in God, you are also happy and fine. Okay, as you say. I believe in God and perform my rituals, I am also happy. But when we both die, if God doesn't exist, you don't have any loss, neither I have. But if God exists, then I am at an advantage. If God exists, I am at an advantage. You are at a loss. And that atheist says, Swamiji, then you are right. <laughs> so even considering a possibility like if, you should have a belief in it. A strong belief. How, want to, how, how many of you want to be a masterpiece of your life? How, want, how many of you want to make your life a masterpiece? Just raise your hands. Then you will have to be your master's piece. Did you get me what I said? If you want to make your life a masterpiece, you will have to be your master's piece. Only then you will master peace. And that masterpiece is obeying the commands of God. Having profound devotion towards Him. This is not because that I am a saint. I would talk of this. More than 50,000 research papers have been produced by men of science. How some element of religiosity, how some ritual of religiosity gives you physical, mental and emotional advantages. University of Miami, they did a survey for 25 years. What is the advantages and disadvantages between a believer and a non-believer? A believer family and a non-believer family. 25 years of survey, they came to a conclusion that the believers had an advantage that the level of tolerance and acceptance of happenings and situations in life was found to be better in the believer's family than the non-believer's family. Isn't this a big advantage in life? Your level of tolerance and acceptance of happening, happenings in your life. Because I think all of us know that God has not signed an MOU with us. That everything in your life, bacha ja pe, everything will be goody goody. Kisi ke paas MOU ho to jara uncha karna hat, hum bhi dekhle kabhi. God has not signed an MOU. Life is like a box of chocolates. In, in 1996, when we were in United States for family shibirs with Pramukh Swami Maharaj, we were doing family shibirs, sitting with the families, sitting with the children, t teenagers, youngsters. And so like at that time, there were less mobile phones. So if you call somebody on the landline, if the other person was engaged, there would be a cassette that you could hear on the, from the telephone exchange. And that would say, life is like a box of chocolates. At that time in the United States, they had created a gift pack for children to gift each other during birthdays. It's a box of chocolates, but there was no lid. There was no lid to it. You can only create a small hole and that hole of the size of a child's finger. So every morning the child has to put his finger inside that box and try to get one chocolate from it. And after a certain amount of like effort, he gets a chocolate. So it was a wonderful teaching of life for the child. That nothing is free, nothing is free, you have to put an effort. And if somebody tries to give you free everything, he is going to destroy the nation. So nothing is free. Everything has to be acquired by efforts. Prajakwa nirmalya nahi banne deni hai. So wonderful life uh, teaching lesson for a kid. But after that, the words were very beautiful. I specially asked a person to keep his phone engaged. Lift up the receiver so that I can hear it three, four times. So that I wanted to hear it. The words were wonderful. Life is like a box of chocolates.
it has it doesn't have a lid just you can create a small hole put your finger inside and try to get a chalk now it was wonderful listen carefully every morning when you try to get a chocolate you put an effort and get one out of that box whether it is round square or rectangle whether it is with wrapper or without wrapper whether it is yellow green or red whatever the taste it is sweet or sour whatever when you get it eat it and enjoyed it at least i got a chocolate if at all not my choice but i did get a chocolate today life is like a box of chocolates accept the happenings why did this happen with me wonderful question challenging god why did this happen with me so faith this university of miami survey said that believers had a better capacity of tolerance and acceptance of happenings in their life than the non believers the second advantage believers had better self control than non believers again a big advantage in life a big value in life believers had better self control than non believers third thing believers were better at pursuing short time and long time goals than non believers simple survey but a really big one to teach us that values are more important than valuables values are more important than valuables our guru hari mahan sami maharaj was once in md but i'm just finishing in the last 5 minutes a leading tv channel journalist a senior person in that enterprise he came up for personal darshan and blessings of our guru ji mahan sami maharaj and said that swami ji i have attained every accolade that a journalist would ever dream of in my field i have been to heights beyond my imagination i have won national international prizes and accolades but i want to be a good human being can you give me a tip for that from mahan swami maharaj in simple words said be faith in god and obeying the commands of god makes you a wonderful human being See, we are not God fearing. That is a wrong term. We are God loving. And when you love God, you always introspect. The thought in my mind at the moment, the attitude that I am keeping at this moment, the expression of character at this moment, the use of words at this moment, will it please God? That constant introspection will make you a great human being on values. as simple as that and it has power when dr apj abdul kalam met pramukh swami maharaj in the year 2000 in delhi he had come up with a five point plan that swami ji me and my think tank have set together for days and months and hundreds of hours of brainstorming we have come to a conclusion that if we want to make india a superpower which our honorable prime minister declared on the independence day that by by 2047 we want to make india a developed country and we all have a responsibility for that and what cannot be achieved by a population of 1.4 billion if we decide to go in this direction we have the power and we can do it Dr FG APJ Abdul Kalam said so me first sector that we need to work is education and health second is agriculture third is infrastructure fourth is communications and fifth is critical technology and then he said that swami ji you have traveled to 60 countries 18000 villages you have met 40 lakh people personally and counseled them in your personal life and you have created such a huge organization baps swami nand sansta as mukesh bhai said let me share with you that baps is one of the largest ngos of the world with a permanent status in the united nations as an ngo i come from that organization and all of you might have been to akshardham just raise your hands akshardham at gandhinagar or delhi you all of you have been we come from that organization gandhinagar akshardham is a textbook delhi akshardham is a library and the 265 acres akshardham coming up at new jersey in america is an encyclopedia huge huge 
we are coming up with such akshardham campers in the heart of abu dhabi on the dubai express highway and that the sheikh of abu dhabi gifted this 27 acres of land to bapas first time in the history of this world that a huge such monument would come up akshardham like campus would come up in the middle of the desert on the, the dubai abu dhabi that is sheikh zayed sheikh zayed express bike and he has gifted us why because of the values in the life of pramukh sami maharaj that he is an epitome of values such akshardham campuses are coming up at johannesburg in south africa at sydney in australia pramukh sami maharaj single handedly created 1300 institutions of social service hospitals hostels schools colleges sanskar kendras akshardhams community centers hari mandirs and mandirs 1300 in a span of 45 years from 1971 to 2016 that means every 15th day he created an institute of social service and gifted to the society every 15th day of his life imagine every 15th day to get a land to get it legally cleared to decide what to do on it hospital hostel school college mandir the board of trustees decide we being a non profit organization we need to raise funds from the society the architect designs the plan the plans are passed in the local government bodies the ground breaking ceremony performed construction starts after dishing out the tenders one tender passed and then accepted and the construction starts construction come gets over we get two five people who are dedicated to the organization to run that institute or the 25 50 100 people as employees in that institute and the inauguration ceremony done and that institute put in the service of society the whole story that i described this story pramukh sami marat performed every 15th day of his life for 45 years chokhi deshi bhasha ma apna ghar ma na tapakto to 15 divso sarkho na thato chokhi deshi bhasha ma na tapakto hoy bathroom ma to plumber ne avta 15 divas thai che ha ke na ane dar 15 ma divse ek sanstha ubhi karvi etle just fifth standard pass pramukh sai maharaj why could he do this and more than that 1300 saints initiated by by him like us more than 750 of them are graduates post graduates standard accountants doctors and engineers here is hardik sadak stand up at your place he is this is the first attire of a of a youth who wants to have diksha in baps he is called a sadak he has to be in the probation period for 3 years we are a well organized structure nobody can walk in and have saffron in baps a runaway cannot three years of rigorous training probation period then he is into first white robes another two years into white robes and then he gets saffron another two years into saffron seven to eight years of training period at our place in sarangpur then he is posted somewhere in the world for duties and hardik he is an iim indore graduate he is a ranker and after being iim indore graduate he has preferred this way of life for a, to give teach values to the society so mukesh bhai i am giving you a speaker on your 30th year of celebration you can well introduce him ये मैंने आपको इसलिए कहा या परिचय करवाया कि आपको ये ना लगे कि कुछ चला नहीं होगा जमा नहीं होगा ठीक नहीं रहा होगा इसलिए यहां के बैठ गया <laughs> ज्यादातर लोग सं, समाज में संसार में जब संत को देखते हैं तब यही ये बिचारा ये पहले ही वो बेचारा बन जाता है आने बिचारा ने फाव्यू नहीं हो जामू नहीं हो बिचारो रखड़ी पड़े हो सन कहीं परिवार नहीं हो बढ़ो नहीं हो इतना यहाँ भी गो BAPS is a different organization imagine a fifth standard pass pramukh sami maharaj giving diksha to 1300 such youths be chokra un to ghar ma control ma rakho ele khabar padse ke rite thai by the a by the time your son and daughter becomes 18 19 and 20 about 10 to 25 times you people as parents just clap their clap your hands and say ana karta to fill in the gap and pramukh sai maharaj and today mohan sai maharaj taking care of 1300 of us what i mean to say 
person may be less on valuables, education, academics, possessions, high on value, is a different character. He is a magnet. He can attract all kinds of resources. And he can make things happen. Bhulthi Ahmedabad na koi builder ne pujjo to khara ke Dilli ma Akshar Dham na, Dilli ma Yamuna nadi na kina re koktam ne 110 ekar jagya pe to 5 varas ma develop karok na karo. Thai ke na thai. And that too a non-commercial and a non-residential project na. Bandhin vechwan uno tu. And that too of stone and carvings. And he did it in 5 years. It's a world record. A person just fifth standard pass could do this and that too born and raised in a very ordinary village. But high on values. Remember this sentence. This is the second sentence you need to carry in your hearts. A person high on values can attract all the resources in his service. As simple as that. Person high on values can attract all the valuables in his service. And Pramukh Swami Mara's life is an ultimate epitome of it. So when faith in God is the mother of all values, it has the power to generate many values in your life. So keep faith. Even if you don't believe, do it mechanical, but do it. If you don't believe in God, even then stand in front of the God. Bhagavan Madhuram Sarugarjo. Do it mechanical. Everything is not logic. Logic will give you more valuables. Faith will give you more values in life. It is as simple as that. And we don't go by value, we don't go by logic everywhere. If somebody says, Yar, tu jis ladki ko prem karta hai, wo to kaali hai, choti hai, patli hai, chashme wali hai. What would you say? Jo bhi hai mere liye, rani hai. As simple as that, isn't it? Aap mein se koi, I just want to ask you a simple question. How many of you have walked inside the cricket field and said that who, decide, who designed these three stumps? Who decided these three stumps? And why not two and why not four? First, give me the logic behind three stumps. Only then I will start my batting. Kisine ye prashna kabhi poochha tha? Aaj tak yaad bhi nahi aaya hoga. Chalo, aaj mein aapko buddhi di. Kal subha ja ke poochna. Cricket ground pe, umpire ko puchna, opposition team ko puchna. First, I should know the history, the background, the person who authorized somebody to decide the number of stumps, the person who decided three, after that, what was the acceptance committee? Ye sabhi ke naam mujhe chahiye. Fir mein cricket khelunga. Agar ye vichar se gaye ground pe, to cricket ka anand le sakte ho? Cricket ka anand kyon liya aapne pure jeevan? Kyonki ye logic nahi chalaya is liye. So, you can't logic that you can prove it. You can't prove it. If you have cricket, you can't prove it. If you have a cricket, you can't prove it. You can't prove it. You can't prove it. You enjoyed the game before you, because you, don't, you didn't go for logic. In the same way, if you want to enjoy life, don't go for logic there. Accept it. You will experience everything. So, every morning we brush our teeth with toothbrush. Every morning we must brush our heart, mind and soul with a truth brush. And the ultimate truth brush is this. So I talked of three values. First is ultimate wisdom in life. Niti mai jivan. Second, I talked about positivity in life, full of integrity in life. And that helps you create your character and personality. And third thing is faith in God. A value-based life is cherished by everybody. Everybody, we all, isn't it? We all cherish a value-based life. We must try for it. We must definitely try for it. A small try can produce a big result. My innermost prayers at the feet of Bhagavan Swami Narayan, my Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj and Mahan Swami Maharaj, to inspire all of us, you and me. I talking doesn't mean that I have all the values in my life, okay? This is just a caring and sharing for each other. So inspire us with all the values. And lastly, I invite you all to visit our festival from 15th December to 15th January on Espiring Road between Bhadaj and Ongaraj Crossroads. It's a 600-acre cultural city coming up. 
अहमदाबाद या गुजरात ने ये कभी नहीं देखा है दे हैव नॉट सीन इट यू कीप दिस वर्ड इन योर माइंड एंड वेन यू विजिट दैट सिक्स हंड्रेड एकर कैंपस अ कल्चरल सिटी ब्यूटिफुल एग्जीबिशन वंडरफुल जर्मन डोम्स टेम्परेचर कंट्रोल ऑन फैमिली वैल्यूज एंटी एडिक्शन आजादी का अमृत मौसम प्रोफेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंसिस ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स डॉक्टर्स इंजीनियर्स एवरी डे वी हैव द लाइट एंड साउंड शो 16 फोक डांसेस ऑफ 16 स्टेट्स विल बी कंटिन्यूसली परफॉर्म्ड ऑन द सैटेलाइट स्टेज फ्रॉम मॉर्निंग इवनिंग टू मॉर्निंग नाइन टू इवनिंग नाइन एनी टाइम ऑफ द डे यू वॉक इन यू कैन हैव अ फ्यू फोक डांसेस बीइंग परफॉर्म्ड एंड यू कैन सी इट एवरी इवनिंग 25000 people assembly in the presence of mohan singh mal who is of the world some of them are confirmed but it's 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 like a grip it's like my hands that i cannot uh, declare the names but who's who they are going to grace the festival as speakers they will uh, express their ideas people will learn from it their felicitations a children's park on tens of acres of land handled absolutely by children 1500 children of bapas in one dress enrichment entertainment enlightenment for your children and the glow gardens that you saw in abu dhabi and dubai in the expo tens of acres of glow gardens thematic glow gardens for the first time in the world at by 7 pm from 15 december to 25 january after 7 pm it would be a different world there and for that our 40000 volunteers have registered themselves and for that the builders and developers of amdabad have shared very happily 8500 apartments with us to house this volunteers it's a mega festival that amdabad or gujarat will ever see so my innermost invitation to all of you on behalf of bapas definitely join with your family and i assure you this is a routine for us such festivals of this of this size and this scale we have 100000 1.25 lakhs 1.5 lakh people visiting every day no stampede no chain pulling nothing because more than like about 1000 cctv cameras will man the whole festival so it's a wonderful thing my invitations thank you very much for patiently listening to me and all my prayers for all of you